Welcome back. Today we're going to tie the simplest peaking caddis um, that I think that I can that I can possibly put together. Uh, it is a very simple pattern. Two materials really if you count the secondary thread that we're going to use and uh, a bead. Maybe you can call it three materials but the bead's already on there so it doesn't really count. This is probably the closest that I've ever gotten to when I was tying nymphs a lot and fishing them a lot, this is probably the closest that I've ever got to like the Pertagon style, to where it's just a really slender body. Um, you know, typically there's a hot spot on it somewhere and then some UV resin. I'm not doing any UV on this, um, but it's just gonna be a really quick pattern, but it kind of limits your, the, the Pertagon stuff, now, don't, don't, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers on this one because they are effective as hell. Um, very good fish catching flies. Um, that being said, there's not a whole lot of skill to tying a lot of these patterns. Typically it's thread, um, some sort of tinsel or a rib and some UV resin, maybe a couple feathers here and there, but not a lot, and some pheasant tail. Um, but that's by design, really. I mean, they're designed to shoot to the bottom really quick, have a slender profile, get to the bottom, but they're really not a representation, but they do catch fish. This is probably the closest that I've ever gotten to doing that, um, but it is not my favorite Peking caddis, but it still catches fish. This, like I said, there's, there's not a whole lot of skill involved. If you're getting started, if you want to fill a box up really quick, this is a great way to go and it's still gonna catch fish for you. There are, but it, it doesn't challenge you as a fly tire. Now let's, you've, you've heard me talk over the years on, on this stuff. You know, I used to be on one very extreme side to where everything had to have exact details and all of that stuff. And um, I found out that it doesn't need it. But at the same time, like, I don't want to just throw two materials on there and call myself a fly tire, you know. I, I still want to try and represent stuff. I still want to be able to control my materials and do a good representation. So, there's a fine line, I mean, but at the end of the day, if the ultimate goal is to catch fish, who the hell gives a damn whether you spend 10 minutes on a fly or 20 seconds, you know. If the whole goal is to just get something in the water and catch fish, great. It's all that matters. But when I'm sitting at the bench, I still like to get a pretty accurate representation of what I'm after. So this is on the, what's the best word for it? I don't know. This one isn't an accurate representation. Um, it's just a quick pattern to fill up a box and get thing, uh, get flies in the water. So enough of that little rant there. But anyhow, we're gonna go ahead and start this one. I've got a Daiichi 1160, it's a clink hammer style hook. Um, you can use a curved cat, it's whatever, whatever one you want, scud hook, whatever it may be. This is a little bit lighter wire, so I went with that. And then I have a 1 8 bead on there. I'm just gonna get a couple of thread wraps. I'm gonna take that all the way to the front. Or all the way to the back, I should say. And on these clink hammer style, how I always go with my measurement is I just draw a parallel line from the eye of the hook to the back, right where that imaginary line is, that's where my thread stops. So then I'm gonna go with some cactus chenille. This is a caddis cactus chenille. This is a deadly material, by the way. I've used this in so many caddis patterns absolutely love it and I'm just going to take that all the way to the front there we go pretty simple and I'm just going to wrap this chenille all the way up this is like a, a done olive kind of brown ish um, you can use whichever color you like I mean I have a brown in there that I use a decent amount um, but this is uh, one of the ones that I kind of gravitate to. I just like this color. And then I'm going to add just a second wrap right in the front. While I was talking about that, I kind of kind of buzzed right through what I was doing there. So I'm just taking that wrap and I'm going one right in front of the next. And I get to the eye, so I'm, or right to the bead, I should say. 
right at that bead. I'm just gonna take one more wrap right in front, give me a little bit of an extra bump right there. Kind of presses some of that material into the bead slightly. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and trim that off, get this off to the side, do a quick whip finish. One, two, three. And then we're gonna switch over to a, um, just a chartreuse. This is a uni stretch yarn. And I'm just gonna get this tied in and I want this, I got way too much out there, way too much. I want this just right behind the bead, just like so. A really thin streak right there. And that's going to be a representation of a caddis peeking its head out of its casing. Um, they're, they're, therefore, the name the peeking caddis. Um, it doesn't get much simpler than this. If you want to, you can use, um, you can sub like a, uh, a dubbing if you want. I'm going to use tool on this one. You can use a dubbing if you would like. Um, but this unit stretch is really a, a good material. It's really quick, really simple, gives you that nice thin bead or that nice thin line right there. As you can see, it gives you that nice representation of that caddis coming out of the casing. But like I said, not a whole lot of skill involved in this one. Um, you're basically wrapping chenille and tying a knot. Um, that's about it. Get this out of the way. There are a lot of other patterns that I've tied that I like fishing, that I have more confidence in um, to represent this um, this portion of the cat's life cycle. I think I have a couple of them on film. I can't remember. There's so many of them out there. I don't even remember what the heck all I did. I have to go back through and see which ones I have done and which ones I haven't. I'll try and get a more detailed one out there. You know, kind of where it has the 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 representation of legs and everything coming out it's more realistic um this will catch as many fish as the other ones to be honest it's just it, every once in a while you like to challenge yourself as a tire and kind of represent things a little bit better so enough of that we're going to wrap this one up two simple patterns um over the last couple of weeks here to really fill out some fly boxes of this and what you know with the green weenie that we did a couple of weeks back as well um they're gonna pound fish they're gonna catch a ton of fish no questions about it um mm, yeah we'll save that one for another time no questions about it these are gonna catch a lot of fish the debate's still out whether it's really fly tying or not but uh um, not to ruffle any Pertagon guys' feathers. They'll probably outfish me nymphin anyhow, so, but, oh well. Anyhow, thanks as always for watching. Thanks for sticking around for the rant and everything, and we will catch you guys on the next vlog.